Hi, this is Alex Helmbrick, the Sports Information Director at Shattern State College, and I'm sitting here this afternoon with Shattern State women's basketball coach Tim Keneally. The Eagles had another successful weekend splitting uh, both of their games with Western State and Colorado Mesa University here at Armstrong Gymnasium in Shattern. Uh, the Eagles opened with a 60-56 to victory over Western State, and then that was followed by a hard-fought 67-63 to setback to Colorado Mesa. Uh, the Eagles have won 7 of 9. Uh, basically, all, the, uh, all of that has happened uh, in the new year, kind of spearheaded uh, by a really tough performance at the University of Nebraska Kearney. Since then, about every game seems, Coach, it has been a, a four-point, either a win or a loss or going to overtime. But uh, I know that this, this season so far has probably taken a couple years off of your life, just the way that the games have been played. Yeah, they've been good basketball games, really good college basketball games to be a part of. They've been fun. They've been exciting, obviously. You know, there's always stuff you can improve on, and you want to win every time you, you know, you're on the court. But I think the kids are playing well right now, and to take seven to nine at this point in the season, um, we're very pleased. Yeah, six of those last six of the last nine games you've played have been decided by four points or less. Uh, beginning with uh, the 56, or excuse me, the 60 to 56 victory over Western State, uh, the Eagles got a great performance from Caitlin Petrie, uh, who, who finished with 23 points, had a career high 15 rebounds. But I know what you were probably most excited about was those 11 defensive boards. Yeah, you know, and we need to and we needed to place an emphasis on that all week in practice. Um, Western State had the leading rebounder in our conference, Katie Hall. Um, and she's also a very good offensive post player and the way we were scheming to defend her was a lot of three-quarter front and full front in the post and what this makes you susceptible of is giving up old boards because when the shot goes up she has a natural rebounding position where her man's you know not between her and the basket Um, and our guards had to do a great job of collapsing down in front of her and picking up some of those defensive rebounds and Caitlin did a good job of coming in there and helping us out. If if a a casual observer just looked at the box score and, and noticed that Shattern State shot 32% and Western State shot 29%. He'd probably think that it wasn't a very well-played game, but that, that actually was, it, it was. It was a, a tough defensive game. I think I said to you after the game, it was the most physical game that I'd seen all year uh, that, that the women's basketball team has played here in Shattern. And that being said, there was only 21 turnovers. Uh, the two teams did combine for 50 free throws. Uh, but, but really, a well-played game on both ends of the floor. The defense just kind of outshined the offense. Yeah, and that's the way we have to win. You know, you talked about all those close games we're playing right now, and I think it's kind of a product of our system. You know, we're not a overly, you know, we, we don't have a lot of offensive, you know, mindset kids, a lot of offensive firepower out there. And the way we're going to have to win games is, is playing defense, you know, and when you can't score a whole lot of points, you're not going to blow people out. But hopefully if you, um, you know, you play hard on the defensive end, you can limit their, their touches, you can limit their field goal percentage. It's going to be a low scoring game. And that's the way we're playing right now. And um, it's been a good formula for us. Western State led by as many as nine points, about with five minutes to play in the in the first half. Uh, but but you had a couple girls who got hot. Dallas Shaw had two deep threes, uh, and then you received some timely free throws. You were able to cut the deficit to four going into halftime, and then uh, to your girls' credit, came out and played very hard in the second half. Yeah, they're they're playing well, especially in the second half as of late. You know, and I think the kids are doing a good job of just being aggressive enough on the offensive end um, to the point where we're getting to the free throw line. You know. And when we can get to the free throw line, you know, 25 to 35 times a game, you know, it's really helping our offense because outside of that, we're not, you know, shooting the ball real consistent right now, but the kids are being aggressive. And then, like I mentioned before, if the defense is there every night and you're getting to the free throw line, um, you're going to be in a lot of close games. And when you get in close games down the stretch, it just comes down to execution. Right now we're executing well down the stretch. And then the Eagles played a, a second close game in as many nights against Colorado Mesa. Uh, the Mavericks did, prevailed, winning 67-63. to 63. Uh, and, and basically it just boiled down to a, a two- to three-minute stretch in the second half. Yeah, it was tough, especially down towards the end there. You know, I thought – we, we took a lead on uh, Lexi Smith three-pointer maybe late in the game, and um, after that we were just unable to get any good offensive looks. Mesa State does a great job with their defense of keeping people out of the paint. They run this kind of switching man-to-man um, where they force you to score from the outside, which you know obviously isn't our strength, and they d- did a good job of closing down the paint on us late in the game. And um, you know I thought our kids still competed really hard, and just to be in that basketball game when things aren't going really well on the offensive end shows a lot of resolve, but you know, unfortunately, you know, when you're playing that many close games, eventually it's going to come up to bite you. And that was just one of those games where down the stretch they made a couple more plays than we did. 
Uh, the Mavericks finished uh, with 40 rebounds compared to 23 for Shatter State, and they actually shot almost 22 percentage points better than the Eagles. Uh, they finished 28 of 50 from the floor to shoot at 56 percent. Shatter State, as Coach mentioned, kind of struggled a little bit. They were 19 of 55 uh, with just uh, right about 35 percent. But what the Eagles did do was force uh, turnovers. The Mavericks finished with 17. Of those 17, they scored 19 points off of that, including four on a fast break. Uh, And then you guys only committed eight turnovers yourself. So although you didn't get the win, you can kind of have the caveat next to it that you shot 35% from the floor uh, and and only committed eight turnovers. Yeah, I thought, you know, offensively, well, I should say defensively, Mesa doesn't force a lot of turnovers. Like I said, they kind of pack it in defensively. But um, our kids did do a good job of taking care of the basketball, and I thought the difference of the game was just Mesa State's ability to get the ball inside. You know, and when you look at their shooting percentage, one of the reasons they shot so well from the field is they were getting looks in the paint, and they run kind of a triangle um, offense where they'll have three post post players in the middle, uh, you know, formed in a triangle around the paint, and they just find the matchup they like, and they did a good job of pounding it in, and um, they had five players who could post up, and we just didn't do a real great job of, you know, giving early help on the lob passes, and, and I, you know, it's a credit to them, but I thought that was the difference. Uh, three players finished in double figures for Shattern State. Uh, both Rachel Schmidt and Caitlin Petrie had 12. Uh, Lexi Schmidt, uh, Rachel's sister, added 11 off the bench, but I got a couple nice performances from Sadie Waugh and, and, and Dallas Shaw. Dallas Shaw finished with eight points. Sadie had nine, and then Katie, Kata Williams had seven uh, r- running the show at the point guard position. Uh, Coach, what what did you say to your girls after that loss? Because heading into that game, uh, you guys had a nice streak together. You you playing well, and you still played well. You just weren't able to get the win. Do they go into games now always expecting to win? And then when something like this happens, is it is it as tragic? I guess as us fans think that it is, or, or is the team still grounded? No, they're still grounded. And you know, we understood going into this game, and we understood after this game that it's such a fine line right now between winning and losing. You know, this stretch you're talking about, we had two overtime wins, one of which. We had to bank in a corner shot just to force overtime, you know, and you don't bank that in and then you lose the game. Did you really play that much worse? You know, and I think the kids are playing well and they're playing at a high level. And obviously you go into each game thinking you're going to win and you want to win every game. But um, we know that it comes down to just a couple plays here and there, you know, and that's what's separating us from winning and losing right now. And, you know, a couple plays here and there at the end of the game against Mesa and we win, you know, and a couple plays don't go our way against Western State and we lose. So we just need to make sure we stay grounded. We stay focused and we don't get ahead of ourselves, you know, and all we can do is focus on one game at a time and, you know, even to make it a little more minute than that, one possession at a time. And I think if we can keep that sense of urgency that all we're trying to do is win this possession, whether it's offense or offensive or defensive, um, it doesn't really matter where we're at or who we're playing. We just need to make sure we're competing hard and the results will come. Well, those games the Eagles will look forward to are this weekend. Uh, in their final road trip, they're going to go to the Denver area. They will be at Metro State on Friday, and then, I'll, then that'll be followed by a game at Regis on Saturday. Both teams are, are pretty good in the, in the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference, especially Metro State. Uh, they're 19-2 and overall, 15-2 and in the conference. Uh, both of their losses in the conference uh, have come to, at the hands of Colorado Christian, a team the Eagles defeated in overtime, as Coach mentioned, 74-71 to a couple weeks ago. Uh, Coach, beginning with Metro State, obviously everyone knows in, in uh, RMAC women's basketball circles, probably the most physical and probably one of the most intimidating teams to play against. Yeah, they are. They play a brand of basketball that isn't pretty. You know what I mean? But it's highly effective. They they kind of grind it out on the defensive end, and they, they don't do anything tricky. You know, they just run a half-court, straight-up man-to-man defense, and they just try to, you know, be more physical than you and be, be tougher than you. And um, it's been successful for them. And on any given night, they do have the offensive firepower to score, but it's not their M.O. They just like to win with – tough defense being physical and they're very very good on the boards I think they're averaging 15 more rebounds per game than their opponents which is astonishing you know so um, you know coming into this game we just need to know what we're going to be up against and try to match that type of intensity and that kind of physicality. That game will tip off Friday at 5, and then the Eagles will be back in action Saturday night at Regis. They'll actually play the late game. They play at 7, uh, and, and Regis is 8-15 and 15 on the season, 6-11 and 11 in the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference. Uh, the Eagles' first win of the season actually came over the Rangers here in Shattern. It was a 71-48 to 48 victory, uh, but since then, the, the Rangers have improved. Yeah, they have, and at this point of the year, both teams are really different. You know, they, they've, they're playing a lot better, but so are we, you know, and um, I know coming into this game that it's 
going to be tough. You know, Coach Ronig at Regis always has her kids playing extremely hard, and they're always playing well late in the year. Um, and they feature one of the best players in our conference in Taylor P- Purdy, who's kind of a multi-threat where she can, uh, you know, go out and hit threes and post up as well. So um, it'll be a tough matchup. They're, they're Defensively, they're doing a couple things a little bit different. They're zoning more than they have been in the past, which we have struggled with traditionally. So, um, you know, obviously, like I said, we don't like to get ahead of ourselves, but as a coach, you got to prepare, you know, and we are preparing for that Saturday game right now. And um, we know that, you know, no matter what the records are, it's going to be a tough game every single time you play Regis. Yep. Well, you and your girls have put yourself in the position to be in the RMAC playoffs. If the season ended today, you guys, I think, would be in. And if you can just maintain until the season ends, you play your final three games at home, uh, there's still a lot to play for. Yeah, it is, but it's such a log jam. Right now, you know, we're in sole possession of sixth place, but if you look at the loss column, we're one game out of 12th, I think. <laughs> you know what I mean? So um, it's really fragile right now as far as those standings go, and they change drastically from night to night, you know. So um, we can't, like I said, get hung up on the standings and where we're at. All we can do is focus on this next game and do everything we can to get a win. All right, Coach. Well, we all know every game counts, and best of luck to you this weekend. All right, thanks a lot, Alex.